Sun Sky, a special presentation of Heartbeat Alaska, a forum for Native issues and concerns. One voice, one sky. Hello to everyone in rural Alaska. Welcome to One Sky, and also hello to our good friends in Navajo Nation in Window Rock, Arizona. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we travel to the state of Wisconsin and learn about the tribe of Indians that live there, the Menominee. It's this 235,000 acre parcel of land that the Menominee have called home for thousands of years. The Menominee Indian Reservation is also Menominee County, located about 45 miles northwest of the city of Green Bay. Home for our people was once a much larger tract of land, spanning much of what is now the state of Wisconsin and part of what we now call Upper Michigan. But that is in the past. The Menominee Reservation today provides only a small portion of the bountiful resources once readily available to the tribal members, yet we love it still. Our land is heavily forested. With each sunrise, shadows of towering oaks, maples, birch, and hemlock dance across the forest floor and there are many stands of pine. More than 6,000 acres of crystal clear lakes, streams, and waterfalls are found on the reservation. Walleye, trout, bass, sunfish, and northern thrive in these life-giving waters. Not only do they provide sustenance, but many of the reservation's waters, such as the Wild Wolf River, are excellent avenues for recreation on the reservation. The greatest significance of any story deals with the people and their relationship to their land, lifestyles, beliefs, and practices. Hi, I'm Keith Turtelot, a Menominee Indian. Join me for a closer look into the lives of the Menominee, our businesses, our culture, and our remarkable past. Welcome to the land of the Menominee. more than 6,500 enrolled Menominee tribal members. About 3,400 live on the reservation. There are two main villages, Neopit and Kashina, a smaller village of Zor, and a more scattered community called South Branch. These communities resemble that of other smaller Midwest towns with local churches, grocery stores, and quick mart gas stations. But our tribe has added the distinction of our proud heritage to the character of our towns. While the present reservation goes back more than 150 years, the last decade or so has seen the most remarkable changes toward modernization. In large part, those changes stem from the booming success of the simple little game called bingo. Menominee Tribal Bingo attracts people from all over Wisconsin, as well as from Michigan, Illinois, and Minnesota. A large portion of the players are from the surrounding area of Shawano, Clintonville, Gillette, and Anigo, and most are non-Indian. Menominee Tribal Bingo has 10 sessions a week. The average attendance is approximately 3,000 per week, give or take 500 people. We have, last year we gave away a prize of $72,000 to an Oshkosh lady. 
our average price for a game per game is one hundred and twenty five dollars or one hundred and fifty dollars per regular session. Another major attraction lies across from the bingo hall, the Menominee Nation Casino, a 20,000 square foot facility. <laughs> Vegas style gambling action is fast and furious in the Menominee Nation Casino. There are several ways to play to win. Blackjack is one way. Vegas tickets or pull tabs are another and the ever-popular slots and video gaming machines are still another fun way to try your luck at the Menominee Nation Casino. We have made both the bingo and casino halls inviting places to come for fun and excitement. Together, these facilities have provided more than 300 jobs. I've seen a real change in the uh, attitude of the people there are excited about our gaming operation and the jobs that it brings to the community. They're excited about that they're able to provide things for themselves at, uh, in the family environment. Ten years ago, 15 years ago when we were a terminating tribe, things were real bleak for us and today with restoration here and the gaming operations going bringing new uh, opportunities for our people, it's, there's a real pride there. Perhaps the biggest result of success through gaming is the improved quality of life for all tribal members. Not only are there more jobs for our people, but we have seen many other improvements on the reservation. In 1992, the tribal budget stood at more than $6 million, 75% of which was funded by tribal gaming dollars. The impact of this revenue has made it possible for the Menominee Loan Fund to increase its lending capacity and provide loans to tribal members. In a nutshell, because of the uh, profitability of the gaming operations, we have been fortunate and able to access some of those funds which have doubled our capacity, our lending capacity, and therefore we're able to serve more Menominees and with increased amounts. The direct impact of gaming on the reservation includes many other expanded services now available to tribal members. Okay, with the income generated from gaming, we have been able to improve and expand our computerization, uh, which in turn helps us provide computer systems for departments that normally would not have been able to be computerized. This is the Menominee Tribal Headquarters. Much of our tribal government is stationed here. You know, one thing that most people don't realize is the Menominee people were among the first to be governed by democracy. And our government proudly functions by the people and for the people to this day. Uh, the Menominee Tribal Legislature is our governing body. It's the core of all decisions regarding tribal activity. The nine-member tribal legislature is the constitutionally empowered law and policy-making entity on the reservation. The council members oversee the operations of the tribe, maintain the tribal budget, and are responsible for the health and welfare of our tribal members. Because the reservation is also a county in the state of Wisconsin, a separate Menominee County administration has been established as well. Other important departments located in the Tribal Office Building and elsewhere on the reservation include the Menominee Tribal Housing Authority, Menominee Tribal Law Enforcement, the Menominee County Highway Department, Menominee Tribal Utilities, and the Menominee Tribal Motor Vehicle Department. But the list doesn't end there. In all, there are more than 1,100 tribal employee positions. In addition to the bingo and casino business operations, the tribe is involved in a number of other tribal organizations, programs, and profit-making activities. One of the long-standing enterprises of the tribe is lumber. The Menominee are recognized as having some of the best managed forest land in the world. All of Wisconsin's timber species, approximately 46 varieties of trees, grow on the reservation. As much as 95% of the reservation's 234,000 acres are intensively managed forest land. Today, all enrolled members of the Menominee Indian Nation are considered owners of this highly successful business, which calls itself the Menominee Tribal Enterprises. It has been part of the country's lumber and forest industry since 1908. By using the sustained yield principle of foresting, Menominee Tribal Enterprises make sure that the tribe's standing timber inventory is never depleted.
The sustained yield practice ensures a complete mix of area timber species for future generations. The early idea of sustained yield was conceptualized by early Menominee leaders in 1854 when they first settled on uh, these 10 townships that we have. And basically the idea of sustained yield was to start cutting on the east side of the reservation and work at such a speed to the west side that they would have like quality and quantity of timber to cut on the return trip. That concept of sustained yield has stayed with us over the last 140 years. Menominee Tribal Enterprises employs more than 300 people. Of that number, 164 are employed at our sawmill facility in Neopa. It's a modern, well-equipped saw operation that utilizes the latest advances in the industry. And we boast about our ability to offer the finest quality lumber product mix in the Great Lakes area. Every year, more than 24 million board feet of lumber, enough to build 2,400 homes, is marketed throughout the world by Menominee Tribal Enterprises. The pine mixed pine and hardwoods are used for everything from furniture to paper, from flooring to paneling, from particle board to veneer. The tribe employs approximately 300 workers for this operation, including expert foresters, certified lumber inspectors, sawyers, and knowledgeable sales personnel. A portion of the logging and lumber industry's history has been gathered for posterity at the Menominee Logging Camp Museum. The seven log building complex houses artifacts from cook shanties, blacksmith shops, bunk houses, harness making, and other lumbering operations. Many logging tools and even record setting trunks from the Menominee Forest are on display. This museum gives visitors a true picture of what life was like in the Menominee logging camp years ago. The success of any community is reflected in the quality of health care available. The Menominee people have always been very health conscious. In 1977, the Menominee Tribal Clinic became the first health facility plan constructed and operated by an Indian tribe in the United States. Our clinic offers an extensive line of quality health care services to approximately 4,000 people, both Indian and non-Indian. They come from Menominee County and the surrounding communities in Shawano, Oconto, and Langlade counties. The facility employs nearly 80 people, also both Indian and non-Indian, and its comprehensive health care includes the services of four full-time physicians. Who is this? Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. There's a pharmacy. A radiology department equipped with the latest in radiographic x-ray equipment. And laboratory services are performed on site. In another part of the building, a state-of-the-art dental department provides a full range of services. There is also an optometry department handling everything from examinations to prescriptions. The Menominee people have made great strides in providing high-quality ambulatory medical, dental, and community health services for area residents. In addition, the tribe's elderly meal program exemplifies tribal health concerns. Each day, 250 senior citizens, both Indian and non-Indian, are served hot meals at their choice of two locations on the reservation. And a recent decision to construct a $600,000 senior citizen center reinforces the tribe's philosophy of caring for its elderly. The success of the Menominee Tribal Gaming makes this building possible. There is also a free transportation service which carries seniors and disabled persons on their shopping, medical, and personal errands. Ensuring a secure future for generations to come is another important goal of the Menominee. As in the past, we continually develop programs and services geared towards improving the lives of our children. The construction of the Menominee Youth Center in Kashina is one example. It was possible due to the increase of tribal budgets from gaming. This has given the tribe money to participate in federal matching grant programs. 
The youth center was largely funded by a Department of Housing and Urban Development Community Development Block Grant. It provides a social meeting place for our young people offering healthful recreational activities during their free time. The center's special fitness room is equipped with a complete line of quality fitness equipment and is available free of charge to the tribal youth. There are also nutritional programs offered through the center by qualified professionals from the University of Wisconsin Extension Services. These people are interested in the happy, healthy development of all tribal youth and construct their programs accordingly. Next to the youth center is the newly constructed library building, also funded by the matching grant program, this one from the Department of Education. Both of these facilities increase the quality of these educational and recreational opportunities provided for our youth and tribal members. To help those suffering from alcohol and or drug addictions, special counseling services are offered by the staff at the Manasekia Center. Concerned tribal volunteers are put through a special training program which helps people in the healing process. As we said earlier, our children are the future of our tribe. Today, we Menominee know that creating a secure future for generations to come means preparing tribal youth to meet the challenges that lie ahead. There's a world of opportunities for Menominees today. When I started with education in 1975, we only had approximately 40 Menominees that were going to colleges and about 25 that were going to technical school. Today we have over 133 students and probably much more than that this fall. And we also have 55 that are going to technical colleges. So you can see that the, the awareness for the educational opportunities is really growing. They have much more opportunity than I ever had when I was a young person and I think that's wonderful. History and culture have always been important elements in the lives of every tribal member. We are an Algonquin-speaking tribe, and to ensure that Menominee heritage is not forgotten, our language and culture are taught throughout elementary and high school. Even the very young are given a foundation for learning about their heritage in the Menominee Tribal Head Start program and in the Menominee Tribal Daycare Center where the child care needs of the growing tribal workforce are met. The future of the Menominee is bright. It can be seen in the faces of our young. Humans have devoted considerable time and thought to explaining how we and the rest of the environment emerged out of the great mystery. During this long process, many myths, stories, and ceremonies evolved. These were methods used to pass along insights, understandings, and beliefs from one generation to the next. The story of Adam and Eve, Christmas, and Hanukkah are all modern forms of these methods. Our people use methods too. To be a Menominee means being special. That special feeling is reflected in the story of our tribe's origin. The earth was created by Machuayatuk, the great spirit, referred to by some Menominee as father of all fathers. He made the sun and the stars. He created the many spirit beings, giving them the form of animals and birds. Eagles and birds are the spirits above the earth. The animals that walk on the ground are the spirits on the earth. The earth, Kokomesima Ketakmena, or grandmother, our sacred land, gave birth to a daughter the moon. The daughter gave birth to twins, one of whom grew up to become a male being. Machuetu gave the twin many powers so that he could complete the building of the world. The twin built the hills and the mountains and made lakes and rivers. The creation of the world was completed before there were people on earth. The intention of Machuetu was to give human beings a purpose for their existence and an opportunity to develop their knowledge and talents as they continued his work. At a place where the village river, the Menominee River, meets the bay in spite of itself, or the Bay of Green Bay, a great bear was created and started traveling up the river. 
As he traveled, he talked with Machuatuk. When Machuatuk saw that the bear was still an animal, he allowed the bear to change its form. The bear was pleased at what Machuatuk granted. So Machuatuk changed the bear into a man. As he traveled along the river, he found himself alone and decided to call unto himself the Golden Eagle. He said, Golden Eagle, come down and be my brother. The Golden Eagle descended and Machuatuk changed him into a man. He became the brother of the bear. The two brothers then traveled up river together. As they did, they pondered whom they would call upon next to become their brother. While considering this decision, they saw a beaver approaching. When they met, the beaver was adopted as the younger brother of the bear. She was called Beaver Woman. As woman, she is equal to all other clan symbols. As they continued their journey up the river, the bear and the golden eagle adopted the wolf, the crane, and the moose as brothers. Machuatuk changed each into a man, and they became the five principal clan symbols. Through their travels, each of the five brothers adopted younger brothers, and they changed into men. All together, they became the first Menominee people. Our people use methods too. The stories you just heard on creation and origin are examples. Much of Menominee ceremony, art, music, and oral tradition is still used to define and convey rich insights gleaned during thousands of years of existence. These cultural expressions have greater and more complex meaning to members of the Menominee Nation than does the mere written word. are social events for the Menominee. They are a way of celebrating Menominee heritage. We use special ceremonies to honor the dead and pay homage to the Great Spirit. Clearly, the powwow is an artistic as well as a social expression of our heritage. Clan symbols may be present in the costumes. Eagle feathers and bear claws are a few examples. Powells are held several times a year, and the public is always welcome. But powwows are not the only means of artistic expression by our people. rice gatherers. Rice was the abundant staple found in the many lakes and rivers that were the lifeline of the tribe's original nine and a half million acres, a majestic track reaching from the Great Lakes to the Mississippi River. For many years, our people subsisted from the bountiful wilderness they called home. Menominee dwellings were made of saplings bent to form a dome-shaped structure covered by bark or mats. Our early ancestors lived by hunting, fishing, gathering, and by garden harvest of corn, beans, and squash. In these early years, the Menominee practiced herbal medicine, knowing just what herbs to pick and dry at different times of the year to counter various ailments. The game of lacrosse was a favorite sport of many tribal men and boys. Eventually, trappers, traders, and other non-Indians heading west migrated through Menominee country. As a result, the 1800s saw a series of treaties drafted and made law. These treaties continuously chopped away at our nine and a half million acres. Our land was traded for insignificant amounts of money, and some was even given to two East Coast bands of Native Americans. Finally, the present Menominee Indian Reservation was established in the Treaty of 1854. Even then, however, the boundaries were not sacred. 
Only two years later, another treaty took two townships of our reservation to establish the Stockbridge Muncie Indian Reservation. Later, when non-Indians attempted to take more of our historic lands, then Menominee Chief Neopit said, We accepted our present reservation when it was considered of no value by our white friends. All we ask is that we are permitted to keep it as a home. That statement shows how our people revered what little land they had left. In the years that followed, the Menominee logging and lumbering industry was established. Our people worked hard to make it successful. Even in the 1800s, our people understood the environment and how important it is to implement the sustain your principle of foresting to ensure a continuing supply of timber. The Menominee would not and did not tolerate the pine ring lumber barons who sought to clear out our forests. The Menominee people have always been protective of their forest lands as was evident in a lawsuit which began in 1934. The lawsuit charged the Bureau of Indian Affairs with mismanaging the Menominee forests. In 1951, the tribe won the lawsuit and was awarded a $7.5 million judgment in the U.S. Court of Claims. At this point, our tribe's wealth, in addition to the successful logging and lumbering operation, made the Menominee tribe prime candidates for a devastating experiment called termination. In other words, the profits from what was once the tribe's biggest source of revenue, our sawmill and logging operations, instantly became a liability. The ultimate goal of the act was to force the tribal membership to join the mainstream of American non-Indian society. It was the worst interference of Menominee self-determination to date, and it was a disaster. Termination failed miserably. Trouble began as soon as the act was in force. Poverty, alcoholism, further loss of tribal lands, and a dependency on the English social welfare system never needed prior to termination were all devastating effects that took hold as the U.S. government attempted to strip tribal identity from us. But the will of our people is strong. And despite the poverty, the alcoholism, the devastation, our people worked to reverse this misguided genocide. As a result, new legislation was introduced in 1973. Nineteen years after we lost our identity and our ability to set our path as we have seen it for thousands of years, the historic Menominee Restoration Act reinstated the tribe as a federally recognized sovereign Indian nation. Once again, the United States is obligated to the Menominee by treaties, agreements, and statutes. This brings us to the present and to the progress and success my people have restored for the tribe. Thank you so much for joining me for another One Sky. Join me again next week where we travel around the country learning about our native brothers and sisters. See you then.